And welcome to the Dunkin' Donuts Center here in downtown Providence, Rhode Island. And we've got Big East basketball for you this afternoon on Fox as Marcus Howard and the Marquette Golden Eagles, ranked 19th in the nation, coming to town to take on Ed Cooley's Providence Friars. And the standings in the Big East, the race is getting tight. Seton Hall, Creighton, Villanova at the top. Providence, Marquette right in the middle. Hi, everybody. I'm Gus Johnson, along with former Big East star and Connecticut star Donnie Marshall. And welcome to the dunk. Interesting game here today, folks. We get a chance to see a player of the year candidate in Marcus Howard. Two teams fighting for positioning in the Big East. Providence fighting for their NCAA playoff lives. And this time of year, I know we say it a lot, these are big games. This is a huge game for Providence. They got to be physical, but they have to be clinical. You can't just go out there fouling. No silly fouls to impose your will. On the other side, Marquette, you know it's all about Marcus Howard, but he has to include his teammates. They have to play as a unit and, and involve other guys to get a win on the road. All right, time now to join the third member of our team on the sideline today, Andy Katz. All right, thank you, Gus and Donnie. Well, I just spoke with Marcus Howard during warm-ups. This is going to be the first game after wearing that face mask for four games after breaking his nose on January 29th against Xavier. He told me it had been bothering him, but he's been practicing without it. So we'll see how he does today without that face mask. Back to you, Gus and Donnie. All right, thank you very much, Andy. Here are the starting lineups brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Yeah, I know we know about Marcus Howard, but Sakar Annam, to me, he's the multi-tool for Marquette. Does a little bit of everything and down low, David Duke. Doesn't have a lot of creases. He's young, but he's got to lead from that point guard spot. And your officials for today's game. We've got a great trio. Jeff Anderson, Brent Hampton, and Clarence Armstrong. Providence beat Marquette 81-80 in overtime in Milwaukee on January 7th. A.J. Reeves hit a three-pointer with four seconds left in regulation. Sit the game into overtime and the tap controlled by the Friars. Yeah, it's got to be about taking care of the basketball, value your possessions if you are Providence, run your stuff. Here's Watson, top of the key, guarded by John, the two big men. David Duke looking to get his scoring together in this game. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Pipkin, 16-footer, and hits. It's a real nice start, not only for Providence, to get a mid-range jumper, not a long three, and also for Pipkins. He needs to keep going for these guys. He's here because he can add some value in that strength of his maturity. Pipkins, the UMass transfer, had 16 against Georgetown in their win on Wednesday. Bailey swings it. Adam curling. McCune hard down the lane. Pump fake got his man in the air to travel. And a look at the Boost Mobile keys to the game. Yeah, pretty simple. You got to spread the wealth if you're Marquette. Guys can't stand around and watch the Marcus Howard show. And for Providence, Limit those live ball turnovers. That means don't throw it away and let them go down for a pick six. Providence beat Georgetown in D.C. on Wednesday, 73-63. The Friars scored 43 second-half points to finally pull away. Ball batted around, out of bounds, and will stay down here. Coach Woj, 43 years old. He's averaged 21 wins the last four seasons. After going 13 and 19 in his first season in Milwaukee, but they lost two straight. I, I love more the fact that we walked in the locker room and he rem remembered how I ran Duke off the floor for 22 points. First thing he said was, I remember Donnie Marshall running us off the floor when I was at Duke. Rim running, he said. <laughs> Pipkins. Inside. Nice deal. Diallo has it blocked. Batted out, though. Shot clock doesn't reset. It's at seven. Let's see if they recognize Diallo on the baseline. Double team, got it away, air ball, shot clock violation. I don't think he needed the dribble, Gus. He caught it on that 12, at that 12-foot mark, turn and shoot. Ed Cooley in his ninth year at Providence. Donnie, he needs this one today. Mm, he knows it. That 10-win mark, too, he always says is where you got to get to when you're in a power six to get into the tournament. It's going to be interesting to see if those good wins those quad one wins outweigh the bad losses they got about three or four of them but you got to focus on today this would be a really big win for providence marcus howard preseason all america second in the nation in scoring at 27 a game down the lane on the move here's a teardrop off the back rim number five just too much room for him you know when you open the floor up 
you starting at the at the logo. I mean, there's just so much room in the middle. And Alpha Diallo has to understand, look, if, if you haven't gotten there to block that, you got to back up. And this is just too spread out for a guy who handles the ball so well. Don't think he gets enough credit for creating his own space off that dribble. Marcus Howard with 550. Three career made free throws, most in Marquette history. Pass Wesley Matthews 10 days ago against Villanova. And Howard coming off a 13 point effort against Creighton in their loss on Tuesday. He was fourth 14. I tell you what, that Tyshawn Alexander for Creighton is a heck of a defender. I mean, we talk about teams that have a, a full complement of, of a deep team, guys who score a lot of points. I'll tell you what, Fred McDermott, he has some guys who play both ways, both ends of the floor. Creighton flying under the radar a little bit. They are good. Here's Duke had a big game at Creighton in their loss to the Blue Jays. Duke. Trying to drive, cut off by Howard, wants to use the size four to shoot. Pipkins, hesitation, drives to the hole. Double pump off the last straight away at him. That's great body control, hitting the contact. A lot of these younger players, and he's a veteran, but a lot of younger players try to get the contact and lose focus on getting the basket. Providence has won two in a row. Pipkins has started those last two games after coming off the bench in six straight. Howard, cross court. Up high, Adam can't get it. And this is what you get from Lawan Pipkins. He's already made one from outside. Does such a good job of catching this. Look, right off the catch, a little head fake. And now you get Sakar Adam froze getting to that paint. Pipkins guarded by Howard. Interesting matchup. They swing it. Baseline. Deep. Diallo. Off the heel. Long rebound picked up by Anna. He'll bring it into the front court. Anna on the wheel down the lane. Drops it off the field. John and he's fouled. Just a little glimpse of what Sakar Anna can bring. The ball handling great. You love it. I love this kid. He's so unselfish. Now, most guys would turn and try to score this. Look at the little drop off. Give your big man a touch. An opportunity to go and shoot two. Nate Watson picked up the foul as first. So Sakar Anam from Minneapolis, Minnesota. We talked to Coach Woj in the locker room before the game. He said the kid, he was under recruited and has really developed into a very solid college player as John hits his first. And think about that development. You're playing with the most prolific scorer in college basketball today, Marcus Howard, but let's go back a year. You got to play with the Hauser brothers who come in. Everyone wants to see what they can do. He almost just had to take a back seat. But if you're an opponent, you cannot forget about him on either end of the floor, Sakar Anam. Four up as Providence gets it over the midcourt line. A little pressure to slow down the Friars. Diallo. Pipkin steps into a J. Bam. Just can't stress how important it is for him to get going early. It alleviates so much pressure from Reeves and Diallo and Duke when he's knocking down shots. Seven to four. Now Howard clocking from behind. He got Duke in the air. Ed Cooley wanted to travel. <laughs> Wasn't getting it. David Duke picks up his first. Coming off his first scoreless game since last season against Georgetown. He was over six from the field, but did have five steals. And just like that, Duke out of the game, a bigger defender on Marcus Howard. And now Malik White in more of Marcus Howard's size. The yeah. Bulldogs. Caleb Young is checked in for Providence. John calling for it inside. Howard drives, stops, off the back rim, no, batted around, loose, and it's picked up, A.J. Reeves. Great pace to start this game, Providence playing with terrific energy. Baseline, White drives with the step, leaves. 
Pipkins. He's feeling it today. You can tell. Pipkins, 7 points, 3 of 5 from the field. The rest of the team over 3. Anima, 3. Bailey got a hand on it. Tried to keep it in bounds and could not. 15-10 to play first half. 7 of 4, PC. On top of Marquette here at the dunk. Here in Providence, 7 to 4. Friars on top of Marquette, and they're getting a nice early performance from their graduate transfer, Lamont Pipkin. Well, Gus, out of this corner, 5'11, 180 pounds representing Chi Town Lamont. Pipkin's done a great job, off to a good start, mid range jumper. Now he's just feeling comfortable. Had a 22-point game earlier this month to start the month against Butler, and he's heading that way, and you called it. It's, it's Lawan 7, Marquette 4. That's right. Pipkin started the first 18 games before moving to the bench as Coach Cooley was tinkering with the lineup. Malik White and Pipkin switching in that starting spot. Now White coming off the bench, but over the last couple of games, this young man has really played some nice basketball. This is exactly what they were expecting when they brought him in. You know, he was trying to figure out early on who he was and how he fit into this situation. You got one year, you're trying to make it worthwhile, and sometimes you just got to go out there and play basketball. He's doing that today. Malik White and Pipkins on the floor at the same time right now. Khalif Young. Inside, nice slip, Young with the jam and the foul. Malik White put it on a dime. That's just terrific offensive set out of the timeout. Never in a hurry. I mean, this is, it really is textbook. The pick, the slip, but there was a lot more action before that, Gus, where the weak side defense was trying to figure out where they were. Movement on that back side of that weak side corner is so important. If you stand still, it's easier to defend. If you move on offense, you get plays like that. Young adds a free throw, and Providence takes a 10-4 lead here in the first half. Howard relatively quiet so far. Here's a crossover. Baseline kick, and partially blocked. Loose gets his own rebound, missed it. And somehow, Marquette gets the finish as Jamal Kane Lays it in, first field goal of the day for the Golden Eagles. Pipkins. Reeves hanging. And an offensive foul. And that's my guy right at the bottom of it, Sakar Anum. I tell you, Gus, he just, he's that. Some people call it a Swiss Army knife. He's that multi-tool, does so much. Look at the, look at the, he's standing in there, giving his body up. That's awesome, easy one. Good defense there. Have they created anything more efficient than the Swiss Army knife? <laughs> I don't think so. Here's Howard, guarded by Pipkins, trying to take him off the bounce. Drives, tough shot inside, can't get the roll. Loose ball ripped down by guess who? Adam. Now Elliott, off balance, and good. And Elliott, lanky, he's got that great personality, keeps his team loose. Greg Elliott, averaging five points a game off the bench. He's from Detroit, young, in the corner, kick release, three. Sweet. Reeves at six against Georgetown on Wednesday. 13-8. Providence. Howard on the handoff. Three-pointer. Short. Not off to a good start. Pipkins, Diaga pass, Diallo. I like it, not in a hurry. Get your guys gathered, get them together. Reeves again, same spot. No, Young. Going hard, takes it from Johnson. White D. And against the roll. How about Khalif Young with the grown up rebound? 16 8. They are ready for Bear here at the dunk. Capacity 12,400. This place looks full. 
And a steal, Malik White. Marcus Howard getting caught in between. And now he commits a foul. This is just, look at the yellow, you know, everyone's looking this way. You got the one guy wide open in the corner. This is a good look. You, one dribble by Young, you draw him, and you get your shooter involved. Love those wide open looks early in games, especially for your pure shooters. A little water on the floor after Howard takes a spill. Guys, I don't know if I've heard a building this time of day, this all year, just this awake and, and involved, electric. 12.30 <laughs> on the East Coast. It's amazing. Well, Providence needs this game to build their NCAA resume. And they're playing like it. Mid-range jump shot, no. And a whistle. Looks like a foul on the floor coming up called by Jeff Anderson. You take a look at the tournament resume for Providence, 15 and 12. Called on Adam is first. Duke. Baseline and travel. A little too anxious. Greg Gant was very anxious. <laughs> he thought he might have been able to flush one down. He is a freshman. Third turnover for PC. Great job by Khalif Young, though, this entire half so far of getting that ball in the middle and making just a sharp decision each time. You go finish one time, power dribble, you draw the defense, find a guy in the corner, even right there, makes the right play. Almost like a point forward for Ed Cooley right now. Kane creating and lost his footing. Yeah, they're called, and now they're going to reverse it. It looks like Jeff Anderson had held up his fist, but now he calls a travel. Fourth turnover for Marquette. 16-8 Providence. Uh, we're doing a great job defensively. We got to do a better job. Everybody blocking out. Right? Six, uh, four of their points came off the second shot. All right? Let's keep guarding with a purpose, understanding personnel. If, if we get caught on the switch, no personnel. No personnel. Well, you got to study that scouting report. Even if it's not your guy, Gus, you got to know Sakar Annam's coming off what he likes to do if he likes to go right, left. And that's so important in today's game. It's more than just shooting and dribbling, passing. You have to understand who you're playing against and what those tendencies may be. Tell you what, when we met with him in the locker room before the game, Coach Cooley is usually a, he's got a great smile and a beautiful personality, but he was on edge about this one. He told me, he said, this may be one of the biggest games I've coached in the regular season in my career. Well, he's right when you're fighting for NCAA tournament life. Now Marquette switching to a zone. Diallo on the baseline. And couldn't get it to go. And you can get easy early results. If you get a stop in that zone, now all of a sudden your confidence, okay, good job out of the timeout. We changed the look. Providence knocks down a three, you come right out of that zone. I wouldn't be surprised if Marquette stays in that a few more times. Coach Woj telling us the most important thing for his team today, we can't turn it over, and we have to be strong on the offensive glass. We can't let them dominate us on the offensive glass. Malik White, three. And that's what happens when you turn it over. And that's exactly it right there, Gus. They've done that a few times, Providence. And Woj wants to talk about it. He understands you can't turn the ball over on the road. 19-8. Providence playing some great team basketball to start this one.
All right, according to Fox Sports bracketologist Mike DeCourcy, these are the first four teams out. Yeah, I, I don't know if I disagree with that. I really don't. Obviously, Georgetown, that up and down season, what you're seeing from these teams here, all four of them up and down. They start to roll a little bit, they win a couple good ones, and then they drop a couple. You're scratching your head. Across the board, I agree with that list. Providence with six quad one wins. Again, when the committee looks at it, what carries more weight, those wins or those losses, the bad losses? Marcus Howard, deep three. Providence doing a terrific job of forcing him to take the shots they want him to take. I thought early on when that floor was open, he left a couple short inside, and that made him start to second-guess himself a little bit. Now he's pulling up from four feet behind three. Got to get something out of his offense. Howard 0 for 4 with two turnovers. Gant, the freshman, feeds Diallo, the senior, and a steal by Howard. Howard in transition, and there finally goes down for Marcus Howard. Both ways, you turn that ball over, they have such good players in transition. They make you pay for it, and maybe that'll get Marcus Howard going. It seems like Marcus struggles sometimes. Should I be the scorer or should I be the facilitator? Man, if I'm his teammate, I'm saying, listen, be the scorer. Even take bad shots if you have to. This is just good stuff, you know, defensively trying to get up into him. You, you, you can't go under the screen too many times. And then this, in transition, that's too far back if you're David Duke. I, you almost want him, Howard, to, to, to make a two instead of igniting his team from behind that three-point line. Howard again, baseline floater, no, snatch down, nice rebound by Gant. They kick it out, Malik White, cross town, mid town. Traffic and the jam on the tip by Nate Watson. And an offensive foul against the Golden Eagles. Tell you, when Providence gets going, they turn you over, Gus. It really feels like the court is slanted. And they're running downhill. You just can't get in the way. That's what they do. They average 12 and a half offensive rebounds a game. And that's what Coach Roach oh, talks about. Boy. Before the game, he told us we've got to keep them off the offensive boards and we can't turn it over. So far, they have done both. Turn it over. And Providence has attacked the offensive glass. Pipkins back in. Drives to the hole. Ah, the glass in it. Confidence from making those shots earlier. Now the basket just gets bigger to him. And really, there's been no resistance defensively when Pipkins has the ball coming off those curls. Pipkins averages nine points a game. He's got nine in the first half. Power. Left hand dribble down the lane. Oh, he's got that bob in him tonight. As Howard makes it a 23-13 affair. Not just a shooter, he can get it in so many ways, but if I'm Providence, I can live with those twos. And here they go again, Marquette, in that two-three zone. How do you break this? You gotta get something at that high post area or along the baseline, sneaking in behind the, the defender, but you can't do that again. Marcus Howard, baseline, and a nice move as he cuts to the basket strip and stolen by Diallo to Pipkins. Providence wants to roll the run. David Duke couldn't get it. Power the other way. In the end Whoa. action. Whoa, what a crossover. The runner and off the heel. Wow. Pipkins the other way. What a pace. Furious. Okay, gets a chance to get back into that zone. This is why I think in that possession right there, Providence should have kept this thing moving. You don't allow Marquette to get into this zone that's been effective the last three, four trips down. Five to shoot. Duke. Kicks. Pipkin sets. Quick. And a shot clock violation. 7.35 to play in the first half. However, Lawan Pipkins from Chicago, Illinois, getting it done in PC. Back after this. Providence out 
keep wanting to say the Providence Civic Center. No, it's from <laughs> the Dunkin' Donuts Center. 23-13 PC. Let's go inside the huddle. Coach Wade. Everybody's got a rebound. Guys, they're going to fly at the boards every time. So whether we're in man or zone, you got to find a body to block out. Everybody take a deep breath. They're making it hard on, for us on offense. It means we got to run offense harder. I like that. Get them calmed down because really the only reason you're down 10 is you're throwing the ball all over the place. Listen. They're getting out rebound on offensive glass plus two. That, it's not a major deal, but I think they're playing a little bit too fast, Marquette. Need to calm down a little bit. Let's go to Andy Katz. Well, Gus and Donnie, I was just listening inside Ed Cooley's huddle, and he stressed, we just won our third straight four-minute segment, the last one by one. He goes, we're three for three. Let's win another one. Back to you, Gus and Donnie. All right, thank you very much, Andy. 23-13. I think to elaborate on that for people at home is, is coaches will take four-minute four, ch four minute chunks at a time each half, and they'll say, okay, four-minute games from the start. Next four minutes, and when those timeouts come, that's the, the, they judge on how they did in those four minutes. Theo John on the box, banging, steps through and banks it down. Why can't he get more touches, man? I, I, I wish, I think he can draw enough attention to freeze those defenders that are trying to maybe dig back down and create some more open shots for the perimeter guys at Marquette. Get your big guy touches. And a steal, stolen back by Duke in the corner. Deep jump, Reed, and it's good. It's a way to clean up your mistake. Throw it away, get it back, and find your shooter. 26-15. Marquette digging a hole for themselves. Howard the drive, double clutch. Woo! Man, I mean, he really is his own highlight show. <laughs> and it's more than just a deep ball shooter. And he's showing us that today. Howard now with nine. Deep. Oh! From Pipkins. He climbed the ladder, David Duke. And what we talk about about beating the, the zone, you got to get behind that back line. Can't fall asleep back there. Providence, well prepared for the Marquette zone. Credit coach Cooley getting his guys ready. Baseline Johns on the other side now. Skip pass deflected. Here come the Friars. Diallo loses it. Howard the other way now. Bailey a three. Oh. Up Again. and down they go, folks. 537 to go. You walk that ball up, it allows Marquette to get in that 2 3 zone. Reeves. Again. <laughs> Friars came ready to play today, Donnie. Largest lead of the game, 31-17. Time out, Marquette. And they're on their feet at the dunk. Well, Marcus Howard is a one-man highlight show. But when you're playing against the, a, a team that is possessed, they understand what they need to do in this game. The pass, the dunk, the finish, and the shooter, A.J. Reeves. Providence Friars in control here at the dunk. And yeah, we've got a fight in the Big East. Providence Marquette, middle of the pack. Seton Hall, Creighton, Villanova. Up at the top. Where are you going to watch the fight tonight? Uh, I will be I will be in, in Indianapolis. Getting ready for Penn State at Indiana tomorrow. No rest for the wicked. Or the weary. <laughs> Marcus Howard, as they run the leave up top, Adam turns the corner, cut off. 13 to shoot. Now Howard, seven to shoot, trying to create, spits the defense, kicks it out. Nicely done as Greg Elliott buries a triple to make it a 31 to 20 game. That's how you step up. You be ready when you know that Marcus Howard's going to attract a lot of attention. Ready to catch and shoot it. Pipkin slides down the lane and draws contact. 
Yeah, they're throwing size at him. Here's Duke at 6'6", just smothering. Yeah, he can tell you how much money he has in his pocket. Look how close he is. He is in his shorts. Meanwhile, Marcus Howard picks up his second foul. Let's see how long he stays on the floor with 4.37 to go in the first half. Pipkins. This young man may turn out to be the straw that stirs the drink. Lawan Pipkins. Terrific in the first half to give Providence a 34 to 20 lead. And another foul. And so many variables to why these guys are playing really well right now. Pipkins 12 points. Talked about he's got 22 already this month against Butler. But 16 you, in his last game against the Hoyas. And you need a lot of things to come together, but if you can get that, that point guard position solidified, playing with some confidence to score and pass and knowing time and score, boy, sky's the limit for this Providence team. Power. Driver. Off the glass, no. John with a rebound. Stripped out of his hands, out of bounds. We'll stay here. Providence doing a terrific job of, of really giving Marcus Howard different looks, a lot of off-balance shots, defending without fouling, might have gotten away with one there. Howard, the inbounder, tried to find John out of bounds, deflected. If I'm Marcus Howard, I'm just trying to get this ball in and trying to get it back. You know, I don't have to try to be cute, thread the needle. Marquette almost turned it over. Kane a three. Pure. Jamal Kane from Pontiac, Michigan. June 6'7. Great athlete. White. Pick and roll. Reverse layup goes down with the left hand. For Malik White. Great recognition, only one shot blocker, a big guy in there, Theo John. Once he's out of the picture, you can go. Here comes Pipkin. Inside, nice look, and out of bounds. Friars unable to hold on. Yeah, you got to be able to probe once Theo John's out of the way. Malik White taking advantage. Come on now. Some great teams in that list. Providence, the Friars game to play today, 36-23 right now. They're getting great efforts from all their guys. Yeah, they're unselfish. And listen, I, I know three-pointers, the effect that they've had on the college game the last 10 years or so. But what about dunks? Don't forget about those. I know they're worth the same as a layup, but they get your crowd into it. They get you geeked up. So you sharing the ball, powerful. But it looks like they finally have found their rotation and their leadership with Pipkins and Malik White. Well, when those two are playing well, now you move David Duke, who's who naturally not a point guard. You move him off to that shooting guard spot, and you just allow him to be more of an athlete. But when this guy is struggling and that guy's struggling, you need Duke to get in there and now be something he's not. So they open up so much for themselves and other players around them as well. Jace Johnson in the game, the seven-footer for Marquette. Elliott driving off the glass, too strong, but a whistle and foul. And it'll go against the Golden Eagles. Yeah, that's Jace Johnson. They have just been everywhere they're supposed to be on the defensive end in this half, Providence. And it looks like Providence will shoot one and one. The 305 to go in the first half. Ed Cooley is courted by Michigan at the end of last year, but PC encouraged him to stay. You know, this is where you're from. I mean, this is your hometown. You know how much these fans love you and love this team. Friars is the free throw, Howard the other way. And reaching five coming up. Go against A.J. Reed. Caught with your hand in the cookie jar. That far away from the basket, you don't need to. You got to play with your feet. You know you have some help. That's two on A.J. Reeves. 
And remember, he's made a couple of threes, Gus, so now you start to play a little bit more tentatively when you get into some foul situations if you're Reeves, and he's coming out of the game. Ed Cooley knows how important he is to what they're trying to do offensively, so he's going to save him a little bit. Providence is led by as many as 14 in this first half. 250 to go. Pollard inside. Johnson goes up left hand. No, but a foul. This foul will be called on Young, his first. Yeah, the game plan Providence has come out with today looks like a, a tournament team type style. You know, confident, sharing the ball, communicating. Jace Johnson. Spent his first three seasons at Utah. Graduated in three years with a psychology degree. Second free throw, good. They need him. Theo John's really the only other big. He needs a spell every once in a while, but they are really thin once you get past these two bigs. But people play small ball nowadays as well. Diallo, that one blocked. Elliott with the rebound. Diallo having a hard time finding his offensive rhythm. Kane, and he just dribbles it out of bounds. Self-inflicted wounds. And that's what Woj told us. We can't have those in this game today. Catch the ball, hold it. Ten turnovers in the first half. It just it, it can't happen. You average 13 and a half a game as a team. <laughs> you don't have much more room for, for mistakes now the rest of the game. Pipkin step back Jay and hits. Lawan Pipkins having a sensational first half, 14 points. Hey. 38-24. Johnson. Now King drives off the balance and it rims off. They've had a lot of those today. But it rolled out, getting there where they want to. And here, look at Pipkins. Nice little stop, the turn. One-on-one -on -one with Marcus Howard. That confidence gets going. It's nothing really you can do but hope that he misses. To leave Young call for the foul. And I have a, an observation. See the basketball that the college kids play with? That is not a leather basketball like an NBA ball. Now, you played in the NBA. It's, would you say it's a different oh, feel? Th this ball feels like a volleyball compared to the NBA ball. That's why I don't understand. Why don't they play with the leather basketball in college basketball? At least for the game. But Gus, I've been around. You do a lot of games around the country, too. From Sometimes from conference to conference, they're do using different balls. Wilson, Bolton. Nike, no one's really using the same ball. Some of these Under Armour, some of these kids will play with this ball season, get to the NCAA tournament, and have a completely different ball that you got to get used to. But the, none of the balls are left. None of them. They're all synthetic. Trying to cut costs, man. NBA's big business, Gus. Come on, they can, they can afford real leather. I think the college <laughs> game can afford at least one leather ball for the game. <laughs> Loose ball. Kane, nice rebound as he digs it out to Howard. 112 to play, first half. Howard, top of the arc. Not a good shot. Even Matt, his, his feet didn't look right. He had his mind made up. It was a little premeditated. Ball wasn't really set in his hand. This is where his teammates need to gather around him and, and give him a vote of confidence. Sometimes he's out on an island trying to figure out where his game is by himself too many times this season. Howard, 3 for 12, 1 of 5 from the three-point line. Inside the lap and the jam for Nate Watson. Nice look by Alpha Diallo. The zone not working for Coach Woj and the Golden Eagles. The unselfishness, though, the bang bang plays for Providence. They know exactly where their teammates are going to be. You throw it up, someone's going to get it. 37 seconds to go. Here's a high pick and roll. Kane and Howard. Kane making Howard driving. High floor to no lose. Pipkins trying to get ahead of the field. White back to Pipkins for three. And hits. And up 
hip, hip. 17 for Loire. They're on their feet in Providence. Nine seconds. Howard, step back three, hits it and foul. Now it might not seem like a lot because of the difference in points here but for a guy who struggled all half to now get a four-point play going into halftime telling you Gus crazier things have happened but this gives you some confidence even just one play at the end of the half for Marcus Howard Howard 12 points on 4 of 14 shooting but you know he can turn it around because yeah. he has the ability to score points in bunches. And unfortunately, he's probably going to have to shoot it probably another 10, 12 times if they have a chance to win. But the fact that he got fouled on that play really does give you a little bit of energy, a little juice going into halftime, being down 14, cut this to 13. All about those guards. Boy, day to day. Isn't that what Woj told us? We got to worry about today. And that's exactly what these two players that we're, we're, we're seeing. Pipkins, who cares about those numbers? Look what he's doing today. Worry about the game in front of you. I think a lot of those numbers, too, Gus, this time you got to throw out the window because guys will step up and know that the end is near, especially a guy like him. He's only got a few games left in his career. This is a free throw. Batted out White. Four seconds. White up the sideline. Let's it go. And that's the end of the first half. But it was a great one for Providence. The Friars get a big first half from Lawan Pipkins. And we'll head into the locker room with a 43 to 29 lead. The question, can the Friars keep up this pace? And can Marquette? find themselves in the second half. Let's go to Andy Katz. All right, thank you, Gus. Luan, you're back in the starting lineup three games in a row. What's been the biggest difference for you? Uh, just uh, playing on my identity, just, just being who I am. And just, uh, like I said, playing my game and uh, just hope my teammates trust in me. How would you assess the collective job you guys have done on Marcus Howard? I mean, he's still scoring, so he didn't did a good enough job. But he's the elite scorer, he's the elite player. Uh, it's a whole other half to go, so we just got to uh, just maintain them and just finish the game. I appreciate it, Luan. Thank you. Back to you, Gus. All right, that's the end of the first half with a score. Providence 43, Marquette 29. We'll send you to Sergeant Mike Hill in Los Angeles for the Jeep Grand Cherokee halftime report right after this. You're watching College Hoops on Fox. Second half, Providence with a 43-29 lead over Marquette. Now here at halftime, Providence College honored Father Brian J. Shanley for his 15 years as president of Providence. Father Shanley was instrumental in the formation of the new Big East College. Gus Johnson along with Donnie Marshall. Donnie, I just have to say one thing. I, as a former Connecticut graduate and star there, I'm so excited that UConn is back in the Big East. <laughs> this is going to be so much fun next year. Yeah, well, they better get ready. <laughs> There's some real basketball being played in this conference right. right now. All right. <laughs> Let's take a look at one man that's playing some real basketball. His name is Lawan Pippen. Struggled early, Gus. I think he was still trying to figure out who he was in the midst, in the midst of what Providence had for him. But today, the last five, six games, he's kind of figured out who he is. Knows when to score, knows when to pass. That's the good news. Bad news is Alpha Diallo 0 for 5. All right, time now for our first half stat sponsored by Jeep Grand yeah, Cherokee. Yeah, man, I mean, that, that's exactly the points off turnover is terrific. The points in the paint as well. They're 16 to 10 in favor of Providence. All great numbers right there, but you got to put two halves together. All right, let's go to Andy Katz. All right, thank you, Gus. I just caught up with Steve Wojciechowski, the Marquette head coach. He says, look, they played desperate. We played scared. We did not compete. And when that happens against a team like Providence, you get your butt kicked. Back to you, Gus and Donnie. All right, Andy, thank you very much. Let's see how Marquette responds here in the second half. Golden Eagles with the basketball. I, I should clean it up, too, and say the bad news for Marquette also is that Alfredo only has 
has zero points. And a foul on their first possession of the second half. Is it a foul? Or oh, a traveling violation. So Marquette turns it over. 11th turnover of the game. They only average 13 per game all season long. Pipkins had 17 in the first half, guarded by Howard. And the ball deflected, almost stolen away. Howard hitting the deck. The unexpected. How about LaJuan Pipkins and Alpha Diallo with no points? I think you're going to have to find a balance if you're Providence over this, this second half. You know, every team goes in and it has to adjust, even if you're winning. And Providence has to make that adjustment and get him involved a little bit more. Pipkins off the mark in his first shot of the second half. Alpha Diallo averages 14 points a game for PC, and he is their leader in scoring and rebounding. Yeah, the last five, he's averaging 20 and, and nine and a half rebounds. Bailey, Hume. Hannah. Driving and laying it up high and in. Didn't see that a lot in the first half. Providence was more spread out there. They were jamming up everything in the paint in that first half. It's the first basket of the game for Anna. Pipkins. Let's see if he tries to feed out the Diallo inside. Watson and a whistle. That's Car Anna. Didn't see any of this in the first half. No help, no one on the backside. Great recognition. You see it right there, that whole area in the paint. And David Duke has to stay out in that corner on Marcus Howard. You just can't leave him that wide open, so the help won't come from there. Nate Watson at the line. Four points. And three things you need to know about Big Nate, his favorite band, Green Day. Interesting choice. Hobby drawing. Favorite kid's toy. The John Cena action. As he misses both. Hume really loose with his dribble. And he turns Man. it over. It's twice now. Start this half. Not the way you want to start. Especially someone who can get you going if they're in the right mindset. He's got zero points as well. A.J. Reeves. Curly, Duke, step back, 16, put her off the heel. McEwen with the rebound. Finds Howard, head of steam. Spinning, stepping, short, way short. But that's the best opportunity for them to get easy baskets is in transition. Defensively, Providence was just stifling in that first half in the half court. Diallo. And that is a shot of a player that's not getting the touches that he wants. Crowd getting a little anxious. They don't sit down until the first basket of their team. And they're still standing in here. Almost three minutes gone by this half. Inside, nice feed. And John will rip it down. Just like that. The lead now, 10. Fans getting a little restless. Friars played such a great first half. Watson. That's the car, Adam. Keeping that dribble alive, so important. Finding the big, nice little... Head fake underneath, just a little dribble to gather yourself. I'm not a big fan of dribbling the ball when you're right under the basket, but I understand he's trying to get his balance and he paid it off. Theo John picks up his first foul for Marquette. Pickens. Off balance, kind of in the foul. Kids playing lights out today. Boy. Little on little right here. This is six foot and under league. 
one on one. Pipkins got it going all day long. And that's just big body and little big body. Absorbs the bump. Mm -hmm. Squares him shoulders up. And he allows the crowd to take a seat as he completes the three point play. Lamont Pipkins with 20. 46 33. Power guarded by David Duke. Adam short. Theo John with a rebound. Try to feed it inside, taken away by Nate Watson to Pipkins. Providence wants to run it. DJ no. Loose ball rebound to Duke. No call. Watson, no call. And finally, Theo John with the ball. They're down there fighting. Officials letting him play. <laughs> McCune almost dragged his pivot for Howard, and he's fouled behind the line. You just always have to be aware of Marcus Howard ready to elevate. That's an easy one right in front of their bench. David Duke call for his third. Yeah. Let's see if they switch him off Howard now. He's been really doing a nice job on Marcus Howard, who shoots three. 84% free throw shooter. That's a lot of work. I mean, it, it really is. You think, oh, I'm, I'm bigger. All I have to do is stand in front of him. But you have to chase this guy. You got to fight through screens. Subs ready to come in for Coach Woj. Three things you need to know about Marcus Howard. His sports hero, the great Jackie Robinson, his favorite historical leader, Martin Luther King. You'd be surprised. I can cook minute rice in 58 seconds. Of course you can. <laughs> You're Marcus Howard. Is it done? No, in 58 seconds. Does it need the full 60? Yes, that's the question I have. I know he doesn't. <laughs> He's got 16 to heat it up. Quick. He's about to heat it up now. I got the feeling. We talked about minute rice. 46-36. Curling down the lane, and a whistle and foul as A.J. Reeves took a hard bump. Coach is a co-honorary chairperson of this major event that will be televised once again on Fox and FS1. This is the same course at Newport Country Club where Tiger Woods won the U.S. Amateur in 95 and in 2006, Annika Sorenstam won the U.S. Women's Open. Back to you, Gus and Donnie. All right, Donnie, we know that you are an incredible golfer. You're a scratch. Plus, close, close. Plus. One. So One. That means you're going to have to give me... I ain't giving you nothing is what I got to give you. 13 strokes, brother. <laughs> oh, I just got to say, that's Andy Katz's backyard. He, he's got a place in Newport, giving all his information away. But Steve Stricker won that last year, 19 under. That's an A.W. Tillinghast designed back in 1923 beautiful beautiful track have you played it i haven't you hear why i'm, I'm talking it up ah, i'm trying to get trying out to there get a free <laughs> they're, on a, they're on a lot of places gus that we haven't played but that's one of them that's that's on the list second free throw for reeves is good 48 to 36 providence here comes market high marcus howard And him. baseline underneath. Nice deal, baby. Left hand. Oh, and he missed the layup. Hey, you're focusing on that contact. You got to go score first. Second time he's missed the layup. Now Pipkin, quick release. Blocked by Bailey. Nicely done as he gets back down the floor. You got to have that peripheral vision. You got to see Bailey coming in. I'm, I'm sorry. You got to see Elliott coming in to, to play. Diallo with the strip. Here comes Alpha looking for his first bucket. And they'll get it. I guess I got to do it myself. <laughs> well, you called it earlier, Gus, in this half where he was trying to do it on his own because he hadn't scored yet. But more like that, I call that mindless basketball. You steal it, you don't have to run anything, go score, get the crowd into it. 50 to 36. Howard now. Guarded by Malik White. Ten to shoot. Kane, driving, pulling. Pipkins gets it ahead to Diallo. 
Cross court, Reeves, baseline right. And out of bounds. Yeah, this is just terrific defense without fouling off the leg of Marcus Howard. Now for Diallo, the easy one. And Marquette has reached their recommended daily allowance of turnovers. <laughs> I mean, there. And just what Woj told us. We can't turn the ball over and allow them easy baskets because they're hard enough to, to come by in a game like this this time of year. Make it difficult. Howard trying to create. Howard a three. Everything quick. Trying to hurry up and get that shot off. Credit to defense all game long. Pipkins will take his time. Guarded by Greg Elliott. Inside, Young, eight to shoot. Malik White, in a tight space, turns the corner, deals, and a whistle. Sakar Anam standing in, giving up his body again. Malik White called for the foul, a second. Get caught in the air trying to find guys. Why not a little pull up from that baseline? I, I like that better than floating into somebody. Anam. Now Howard got the step. The run. And off the mark. I love the action, though, this half offensively better than, the, in, than in the first half for Marquette. A lot of motion, they're catching it, they're ripping it through, and they're going instead of catching, holding, trying to figure out what's happening on that defensive side of the ball. You got to get it and go to allow Marcus Howard to free up a little bit this half. Don't forget, coming up next, Villanova in Cincinnati taking on Xavier. Like a free throw good. And here's the other issue for Marquette, only three assists. I mean, not a lot of ball movement, things going to the rim. Not going to get it done against a defense like Providence today. Howard with 17 now. He averages close to 27 a game. Diallo steps out and foul. That's exactly what you don't want when you've already done the job on Diallo, especially a guy like Sakar Anam. Can't foul a jump shooter, and that's his third, and we've talked about it all game long, how important he is to this Marquette team. Alpha Diallo at the line. Had a monster game against Seton Hall with a career-high 35. And 10 rebounds, six offensive rebounds. Both good. 52-38. Johnson slipping, gets back on his feet. Can the big fella hold on and a reach in foul? Can't knock the effort if you're Ed Cooley. And that's the fourth foul on Khalif Young. And Khalif has done so much for them. As that middle catch guy finding the guys along the baseline, not so much in this half. Adjustments have been made for Marquette. Power. Stop and start. Runner off the glass. Good. The difference there than what we saw in the first half was Howard is playing some pick and roll situation with Johnson. They didn't have that. He was trying to create his own in that first half, just making more work for himself. It's coming much easier this half for Marcus Howard. He's got 19. And he's had to work for it. Pipkins. Reeves sets his feet. Loose ball and a foul. Johnson just clobbering. Khalif Young. 
Two bigs battling. Uh, that's a tough one. Just it, it's a jump ball situation, and then Howard. This happens because he turns the corner, and the help is just not there. Pipkins the inbound. And a foul before the ball is tossed in play. A little herky jerky this second half. Officials more involved. That could help Marquette. Jamal Kane picks up his second. And Woj has to be working the refs a little bit. Seven to four in fouls. Coaches always get down, and instead of blaming their guys and saying, stop fouling, you got to get on the refs. Try to even those fouls out. 12 18 to go in the second half. Providence already in the bonus. As A.J. Reeves, 68% free throw shooter. He's got 11 points today. He's hit three threes. And he misses the free throw. McEwen back in for the Golden Eagles. Howard scored the last eight points for Marquette. Hewitt doing a lot of dribbling in this game. His handle has been shaky. Kane, quick release. Pip gets the other way. Friars in no rush, up by 12. Well, they need a quality basket. Getting harder and harder. Yeah. Diallo knocked away from him. Good hands by Marquette. Here's Howard. Can he make a pay? Baseline. Nice look. McEwen bounce pass inside. Elliott counted. And the foul as he finally delivers one at point blank range. And this all happens. Everyone's overloading on Marcus Howard. Rest of the guys stepping up for Marquette. Ten point game. Sure, being called a volume shooter is a good thing, but in a game like this, Marcus Howard is going to have to be that 19 points, but he's taking 17 shots because defensively there are a lot of big guys around, hands in those passing lanes, shooting areas for him. Really had to grind and work for every point today. So at the free throw line, Greg Elliott, the Richard sophomore, from Detroit. Elliott, 14 minutes today, seven points. And he adds a free throw. Yeah, his, his enthusiasm is very available on this team, and sometimes you need that when things start to tighten up. And that's the question. Will Providence tighten up after leading by as many as 14? David Duke. Pitkins inside. Loose. And a shot clock violation. It's good defense. Pitkins has to shoot that ball, though, Gus. You can't get to that point. Oh, wow. They're going to call a... They're going to call a kick ball. Staying with Providence. Pipkins let off the hook. He's got to shoot that, especially when you're scoring. Let me correct myself. Yeah, they call that kick right there on Marcus Howard. Let me correct myself. Providence has led by as many as 17, 43 to 26 at one time. Now it's nine. But what an interesting turn of events. That, you know, that ball could be going the other way. I didn't see the kick ball. Shot clock resets the 20. That's a tough break for Marquette. Young, bumping and grinding. Baseline turn, nicely done. Believe you. Well, what a break. The kick ball. Marquette thought it was their ball. They did a good job defensively, and Providence gets a bucket out of it. John. Baseline. Kane. Passed up the mid-range jump ball. shot and oh. turns it over. The lob, good again, and a pound it down for 
the fifth. And listen to this crowd. The Providence Friars have a leader, folks. His name is Lawa Pickens. He is the brain today. I mean, get back defensively. David Duke, 6'6", six, six, going up top to get it. The Friars, you're welcome. 56-43, Providence trying to hold on with 10-12 to go here in the second half. Time now for SoFi. Money moves. Get your money right. All in one half. Yeah. 24 points in the paint, but it's all set up by those outside jump shots knocked down early. But Pipkins showing a little bit of everything. Scoring, passing. This has been his game. Just when Ed Cooley and the Friars needed most. I will say, though, Gus, with Marcus Howard on your side, 13 points is nothing. It, it really isn't. If he can find his way, he can get them back into this game in a hurry. And he's one of the few players around the country that can do that in a short amount of time. Just so good. I think very misunderstood as well as a player. I think a lot of... People around prognosticators around the country think he's just a shooter. He, he really has more than that. Just in a situation in Marquette, he's got to score. And he's tied up. Arrow favoring Providence. As you take a look at the Big East standings, Providence trying to hold on to that fourth spot. I still think they got to get to 11 and 7 in conference play with some of those losses, bad losses that they've had this season. 16 turnovers today for Marquette. Pipkins, he's been brilliant. Diallo, driving. Young with the rebound and put back. Relief Young's been playing like a grown-up all day long. 58-43, McEwen to the hole. Yeah, don't forget about him. First basket of the day. Hard to believe. Kid like that who can get it going as well. He averages 11 a game. Back door, Duke again. That's the third dunk of the afternoon. I tell you what, Coach Cooley's <laughs> team running some great sets. I was just going to say, Gus, I don't remember this team looking this sharp from start to, we got eight minutes to play here, eight and a half or so, or nine minutes almost, but up to this point, this is the sharpest I've seen them all season long. John, cross court, Elliott shows it, drives, leaves. Oh! And a foul. Foul called on Alpha Diallo is second. Boy, still one of those calls you just can't figure out. The crowd just sees it on the Jumbotron. But this is where all the action is. All you got to do is no ball pressure. Keep your eyes toward the basket. And they, who else? Belief Young. Greg Elliott. Been talking about Pipkins all game long, 20 points, 8 of 13. But Khalif Young, he's seven points, three rebounds, three assists, but has done so much more for Providence all day. Second free throw for Elliott goes down with Marcus Howard on the bench. The Golden Eagles trailing 60 to 47 with the Providence Friars. I believe Young calling for it inside. Here's Duke. Pipkins. Surveying. Young. Maybe not his shot. Now Adam with the head of steam.
Elliott rolls high, keeps it alive to the hole. No call, safe from going out of bounds by Diallo. Great job, Malik White. Tied into the basket. Majestic. It has been clinical in transition for Providence today. Unselfishness. Giving up the ball. 7.40 to play. In regulation. McEwen. Big shot. He can go get it. They don't want to go away. 12-point game. No time for Providence to relax with seven and a half to play, Gus. Pickens. White. Nice. Deal. Big slide the Malik White put it on the money. 64-50. Providence recharged now. And a steal by Diallo. Here comes Alpha, Malik White. And he got too pretty. Well, they've done the job all game. Collapsing defense, creating offense with that defense in transition on Selfish. And the drop off, White, Young, Friars. 64-50. DC under seven to go in regulation. You know, the reason this game is so important is because the Friars have had some unexpected losses this year. Gotcha games. Northwestern, gotcha. Penn, Long Beach State, gotcha. Charleston, not, that one I, I can, they're a good team in the CAA. I, that one I can live with. A lot of those games happened a long time ago, too, Gus, beginning of the season. But those things don't go away that quickly, especially when you're teetering right around 500. Alpha Diallo. Nice inbounds play by the Friars. Could tell you how important it is on those time after timeouts to, to execute those out-of-bounds underplays. And there's our keys to the game. Spread that wealth really hasn't been spread for Marquette. Look at that, only two players with 10 or more points, and then Providence, nine turnovers, but they forced a lot, which has allowed them to maybe have a little, a little give there in their turnover game. Marcus Howard picked up his fourth foul at the 650 mark here in the second half. The numbers for Providence's lead dog. He's got six now, Alpha Diallo. I will say, in all fairness to Marquette, they have, you know, they've tried to play through some of those turnovers and, and trying to force more turnovers, but they just cannot get it going. The defense has been stifling. McEwen, another one. Howard with the rebound, the kick, and I'm a good look at it. Bailey trying to keep it alive. And it's Providence basketball. Now they really haven't had much Marquette in the way of offense. You got to take those threes if you're open, though. Especially Adams' three. We're running out of time here. Approaching the six-minute mark of the second half. Providence. Friars have won two straight. Now, and that's goaltending on John. Count the basket. It's about a five, six inch discrepancy between Duke and Howard. And I thought David Duke got grabbed. Jersey got grabbed, and they played through it. And for him, thankfully, he gets two. Largest lead of the game now for PC, up 18. Seven to shoot. Bailey, baseline, block. 
by Diallo, taken away by Diallo. Outlet pass, Malik White, Duke, oh, again! Double, D! How about the focus defensively? For Providence, everything working in orderly fashion today. Throw it up, David Duke, go get it. This is, I'll tell you what's special about that is, he didn't try to dunk it, which allowed him a chance to make and get a three-point play. Boy, Providence showing us everything today, Gus. Every bit of it, 71 to 50. We told you at the beginning of this game, Ed Cooley needed this one desperately. How fouled, and he'll head to the free throw line. How important is this one for the committee? I mean, it, you, you look at the quad one wins again. It's going to come down to what holds more weight. The good wins or the bad losses. And I think every time you can get a game like this under your belt, that those bad losses start to fade a little bit that happened so early in the season. Now the St. John's game, obviously it's in conference, so maybe you'll get a little bit of room there, but come back and beat Seton Hall. You got a good Marquette team here. And they did beat Creighton. Almost got him in Omaha. Yeah. David Duke with a 20-point performance in that game. Actually, a 36-point performance in that game. Pardon me. Diallo down the lane. And guess who comes out with it? One of the smallest men <laughs> on the floor, Lawan Pipkins. They're feeling it now. Pipkins running the show. They swing it. Pipkins, no look pass, double clutch. White, no. He was underneath the basket. Howard changes gears and takes it down. Woo. That is a big time score. Down the lane, a lot of people think, oh, you got to use your left hand, but what makes this work is David Duke's momentum takes him past, and if you put it in your left hand, he may have a chance to get at it. Watch this, the momentum of Duke goes. Marcus Howard almost stops, elevates. Now he can go back to that right hand, soft off the glass. Adds a free throw. He's got 24, 71, 55. He's playing with four fouls. Here comes some full court pressure. And an offensive foul on Pipkins. Good call by Clarence Armstrong. I got to give these Marquette players a lot of credit. They're just continuing to play it. At some point, you can't look at the, the score. You just have to play basketball one possession at a time, as corny as it may sound. Crazier things have happened. 4 11. Howard. Drives. Hands. And banks it down. Ed Cooley is hot. 4.02 to go. 71-57. And you're standing. Yeah, I mean, again, we're at that time of year, Gus. All these games are huge. Xavier hitting their stride, though. A lot like Providence. Marquette right now on a 7-0 run after trailing by 21. Full-court pressure, Duke stays in bounds. They'll hand it to Pipkins. Diallo, here's Pip. Young feeding, and a whistle to foul. Great position for Diallo on the baseline. Really appreciate Providence and the way they've handled themselves continuing to run their offense. It's so easy when you get a big lead to kind of get out of pocket 
and, and do your own thing as a player, but they have, when we talked about this in the open, they have been clinical in terms of dribble handoffs, running their offense, having patience, and it's paid off. Take a look at the game reset. Diallo. Earning his money from the free throw line today. Six of six. And really the, a bright spot for Ed Cooley is someone other than Alpha Diallo has led them in scoring today. Offensive rebound for Elliott in the corner. Team. Nothing going down now for Marquette. Looks like the Golden Eagles may have run out of gas. Haven't had a lot of those open looks in this game. Providence's defense has been so good, you just can't miss them. You're not going to get a lot of them. Diallo inside, Duke again, quick turn, missed the layup. I think he was surprised how open he was. I agree. That little flex offense. Get a good screen, you're open. Howard gets his own rebound and sticks it back in. Heads up play. First person that knows they're missing is the shooter. Fouls it right up. 73-59. Under three minutes to go. Duke. Providence has played with great rhythm. And if Providence were to win this game today, they would have a whole week to prepare for Villanova. Always a good battle. I mean, you still have to focus all the way through. I, I don't care that DePaul is 1 and 12. You still, you still have to continue. You can't play to the level of your opponent's record. Not this time of year. And sometimes Providence has fallen into that a little bit. But the way they look today, all you got to do is turn on about five minutes of this game tape to realize what they really, who they really are, what they really should be the rest of the way, Providence. Second free throw off to Mark Duke. With 12. Howard, quick crossover. Left hand, no. Johnson had two hands on it, couldn't hold on. And the schedule coming up for Coach Woj's squad. Georgetown, Seton Hall, DePaul, St. John. So three of the remaining four games mm. are against teams at the bottom of the conference that, standings. That matchup on February 29th against Miles Powell, Seton Hall. I'm marking that one on my calendar. I'm actually going to be sitting courtside doing that game. I cannot wait. I love watching those two guys go at it. One of my all-time favorite college basketball players, Miles Powell. Terrific player. Man, special kid. Jace Johnson. This is one of the most electric crowds I've seen this season. And this game started at noon. They came ready <laughs> to watch their Friars. <laughs> and a whistle foul on the sideline. It's Elliott. Now Duke will shoot. So bad for Chase Johnson. If, so in this building, if, if the opponent of a player shooting free throws misses two in a row, everyone in the building gets free Chick-fil-A. <laughs> yeah, Chick-fil-A is a big deal. <laughs> and I'm hoping, it, 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 the problem is these games on Saturdays, you better get it today because Chick-fil-A is closed on Sunday. That's right. But he made one. That's why they were booing him. Poor guy. 75-60. 2 14 to go. Howard. Shake it. Big win for Kansas today. They went to Waco and knocked off the Bears. Bears remember beat the Jayhawks in the Orleans. How about Bill Self? Just 
Phillips on shirt. He's number one team in the nation now. Oh, it's got to be Gonzaga. I, I always thought Gonzaga across the board, their depth, and not just their bench, but all those guys in double figures, averaging double figures. I really believe this is Gonzaga's year to win it all. Interesting. Yeah. Mark Hughes done his great job, too. I think Eddie Cooley was calling a timeout, and I think he gets it. It's a good trap. 150 remaining. Back after this. Showed me around on my recruiting trip to UConn. How good is Obi Tappan for Dayton? Oh, one of the best players that no one is talking about. But they will know about him soon enough. They do, and they start filling out those brackets for the tournament. Like, the people who know about him know where you got to put Dayton. Providence hoping that they will be in someone's bracket. The NCAA tournament's bracket playing the way they're playing today. You never know. College basketball season so wide open this year, Donnie. It, it Anybody really can win it. I, I agree. I mean, you know that? Now you think about that. We always talk about this, you know, the 16 seeds, but what about the four 13s? I mean, over the last few years, 13 seeds have. Have, have beaten some really good fours and, and they're, they're, yeah. it's not outside of the realm that one of our teams in the conference could be there. Friars get the offensive rebound and a new shot clock. 133 and counting. The thing about Providence is they're finally they're to the point where they're reaching their potential. And I think they're where we thought they would. You don't worry about Alfa Diallo because you know he's gonna have those games where he can score. But to have guys stepping up, Khalif Youngs and the Long Pipkins, they're really, really going to make this team dangerous. Cross court pass in the corner. McEwen almost traveled. And a whistle. Foul coming up mm. on the pass. And that should send Marquette to the line. <laughs> this crowd still ended up 14. Minute 14 to play. They're booing the refs. <laughs> wow. Tell you what, this building is electric. These fans, they love their team. They know the game. And they're not going anywhere. Second one, good. 114 remaining in the second half, 76-64. Providence, David Duke, and he's fouled. Small Kane picks up his fifth foul, and he will have to leave the game. Gets hit enough, really impressive. Both ends of the floor. Some games you're going to get good offense, not so good defense, and vice versa. But Providence put it all together. We talked to Woj. We can't. He says we at Marquette. We can't give them 20 points off of our turnovers because if we do that, they're going to score 80. And sure enough, 18 points. <laughs> and here we are, 18 points off of those Marquette turnovers, and here we are, 78 points for Providence. He called it. Game plan is there. Marquette just couldn't execute the way they wanted to. And Howard fouled again, going to the basket. Tell you what, though, the law firm of Pipkins and Young. <laughs> Stepping up big today for the Friday. Hey, Khalif's line was, that, that to me was the least of what he did well today. I thought he really attracted a lot of attention in the paint against that zone. 
made the right decisions, kept the ball alive, finished strong, grabbed some man-like rebounds. But to me, the most important player on this team for Providence is this young man. Yeah. Juan Pipkins. You're seeing his leadership developing more and more every day. And Gus, sometimes it takes guys a little bit longer to figure out what their role is, especially if they only have one season to figure it out with that team. Great point. Well, just because he's an older player doesn't mean he's going to come in and automatically just fit. It's taking some time, but... Needless to say, this is the right time that you want him to be clicking and finding himself. And you just wonder if Coach Cooley is finally ready to give him the keys to the car. <laughs> Last three games, Lawan has delivered. One oh two to go. Seventy eight sixty six. Diallo, Pipkins, and he'll pull it back and try to milk the clock as much as possible. And a foul. Pipkins fortunate there. Tried to pass it, got fouled, but that's when you just got to hold on to it and make sure you have a safe outlet. Pipple go to the line and shoot free throws. Last season at UMass, he averaged 16 points, five rebounds, five assists. Made all 27 of his free throws in the first 21 games of the year. 10 for 10 at one time against Stony Brook. 10 for 10 against Butler on January 20th. He's missed five in the last three games coming to this one. How about 16 assists for Providence today? They say a lot of things in that negative area are contagious. How about the assists also contagious for Providence today? Another bucket for Marcus Howell. Here's Pipkins. Let's play keep away. <laughs> the wild Pipkins. <laughs> Cerebral. Elliott, ball kick with 25.8 to go. And no one in front of him. He's like, okay, no one's back here. I guess I'll, I guess I'll go score. Pipkins, 24 points, four rebounds, three assists. He's been the floor general for the Friars today. Howard, up and in. 20.6 to go, 82 to 71, and the Golden Eagles will call a timeout. We're going to advance Providence with the win, so we update the Big East standings. Yeah, next thing you know there, Providence is nine wins right behind Nova Creighton and Seton Hall. Tell you what, two weeks ago, you would have never imagined that. That's why you got to stay tuned and just stay in the moment. Boy. Beware of the Creighton Blue Jays is all I have to say. I agree. They are playing. I tell you, they remind me, and I've said this before, they, I feel like I've watched them years ago, an Iowa State team. Fred Hoiberg happened to be on that team. Dedrick Willard, Kenny Pratt. Kelvin Cave. Thanks. Yeah. They just they fly under the radar. Tim Floyd coaching him that year. Remember having him in the NCAA tournament in Detroit. Greg McDermott, a phenomenal coach. Oh, what a phenomenal coach. Man. All the coaches in this league tell you, you better bring a lunch. Some tremendous coaches in this league, including this man. Coach Woj. The 
Diallo. 20 points, six to go as he runs a baseline. Pipkins. And a foul. With 16.9 remaining. Providence will improve their record to 16 and 12, 9 and 6 in the Big East, 11 and 3 at home. Marquette will fall to 17 and 9, 7 and 7 now in conference play. I know the crowd doesn't like it, but as a player, we love having a chance to go to the free throw line and make a couple more. <laughs> Pad those stats, especially in a game you've struggled if you're out with the yellow. Second one good. 16.9 to go, 84 71. And Duke call for the foul. They'll get him out of the game because he's fouled out. <laughs> and that cool just looks at <laughs> We talked about it. He's still, me? yeah, he's a sophomore. That don't have a lot of creases. You know those shoes where you got a lot of creases in them, Gus? Uh -huh. Old, worn in. Uh -huh. David Duke doesn't have a lot of creases. He have, <laughs> gotta break them in. Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of creases. Got some cords on his feet. <laughs> still learning. Marcus Howard makes the second with 15.9 to go. No Chick-fil-A either for the crowd. Malik White. Pipkins. And another foul. Providence in the second half, folks, 19 of 25 from the free throw line. In the first half, they were one of two, and this ball will go back to Marquette with 6.6 .6 seconds remaining. Well, sometimes you don't want good things to end. And a steal by Pipkins. Kidding. And he'll hold <laughs> it up. Lawan Pipkins. And the Providence Friars defeat Marquette. 84 to 72. For Donnie Marshall and Andy Katz, this is Gus Johnson saying so long for Providence. We'll send you to Mike Hill in Los Angeles right after this.